everyone, this is Fantasy Esk and welcome back to the Sims 4 Vampire Amazon Royal Saga with the Salazar Coven. We are picking up in Castle Sheba for the wedding reception of Princess Kyra Salazar and Prince Mordred Sahinzar because he got married to royalty who is not supposed to change her name but you know according to vampiric customs he does have to change his last name to incorporate hers because you know their lines are changing so before we dive into all of this let's talk real quick about what happened in the mini movie i think we knew this was coming because at the end of the previous episode it was kind of out of nowhere but i did show you guys the whim kyra had to get married to prince mordred so we just went ahead and did it I mean, the wedding was a lot sooner than was initially scheduled according to Eden's plans, but hey, if Kyra says so, then Kyra gets so. But okay, in the mini-movie, we started off on a scene with Eden and um, Kyra. So the queen was helping her daughter, you know, get ready for the wedding, and their wedding actually took place at Lagatha Saloon because I realized we had like this really beautiful kind of area. Um, that we hadn't used yet and uh, it was especially pretty in the night time so why not but anyways they were upstairs in one of the rooms that the place has and um, the Queen was essentially telling Kyra that she is glad that she finally came around life will be so much easier if she makes peace with it and everything that's been thrown away and like basically this marriage you know um, and Kyra she was essentially thinking and saying, so you knew how I felt, but you didn't care about it. And the Queen's response to that was, I care about you in ways you won't understand, but that's behind us now, you've agreed to the marriage. And Kyra quite blatantly said, not for you, for myself, right? Like, not for you, Royal Mother, for myself. So the whole thing behind that, I mean, obviously we know that Kyra didn't really have 
a choice with this marriage and with everything that's been happening recently like you know even the engagement she was kind of just being dragged along with the plans that others had already made for her um, but I think taking into account kind of the stuff that's happened maybe the way her feelings have changed in the previous episode you know with that surprise kiss and even the conversation she had with Mordred after their engagement Kyra has reached a stage where she's taking a little bit more like agency in her own life so she knows that she can't you know escape from the marriage it is inevitable who she marries is not her choice but when she marries can be her choice right that's almost a little bit of a I wouldn't say rebellion but like she's taking control of her story just a little bit and she was quite resistant to Mordred for a while there but I think after the things that have happened like she has like I said before she and Channing had a very healthy romance I feel and as part of that there was a healthy mourning period and you know following that I think she's been able to kind of put that part of her life away but she's still been resistant to the marriage not because of Channing which some of us might misunderstand she's not resistant to this because of Channing she's resistant to this because Channing aside she should get a choice in who she's with right whether or not Channing existed whether or not he was a romance of hers she shouldn't have to be forced into a relationship which is what happened with her and Mordred um, but at some point she started becoming curious by you know Mordred and her interest was kind of piqued by his actions and kind of the things that he was saying so she's started opening herself up a little bit more and maybe opening up her heart a little bit more potentially to Mordred and so her agreeing to this marriage was more like well I want to pursue this because I'm intrigued at this point to find out if there could be something there I know it's not my choice who I end up with I mean this is the person that's been chosen for me but I can choose when I you know put effort into this relationship when I make it official per se um, all of those kind of things so that was kind of her mindset going into all of this I'm not gonna say she wants to marry him because she is like fallen completely and utterly head over heels in love with him that is not the case this is like the beginnings of romance between the two of them but she's interested in his character and his behavior at this point um, and before like they hadn't talked to each other at all but when once they've started talking there's something about him that doesn't match up with her initial expectations and her initial perceptions and she wants to explore that so that's kind of what happened in the beginning and then we had their actual wedding uh, you know under the wedding arch and um, it was a little bit different to what we might be used to with you know the um, the Queen's marriages they didn't have like everyone assembled and you know the vows uh, I, I mean like they didn't have everyone standing like the coven standing around them and then the vows um, the ring exchange they didn't they had the ring exchange later on but it wasn't part of like the wedding ceremony so a little bit of you know Mordred's side uh, behind the scenes so coming into this obviously they were aware it was a marriage alliance obviously you know Mordred would have been aware of that Mashmega K would have told him but I think some details of the actual like wedding process was not discussed entirely and Mordred, you know, he is high maintenance. He does have a perception of himself being royalty and, you know, he should be treated a certain way. And um, when those things aren't met, he gets kind of cheesed off very easily. He gets ticked off very easily. So he didn't know that the wedding would happen, you know, entirely the vampiric way. And he didn't know that he would be kind of subservient to Kyra at least that's the way you know the vampires have always done things the males being subservient to the female partners he comes from a place where the females are always concubines to the males so you know it's obviously very different for him 
And also this whole custom of the spouse, uh, like spouses having to change their last names to incorporate the other ones. Um, their partners and if you're royalty you don't have to change your name like if you're female royalty you don't have to change your name it's the partner that has to so again subservience right so he he didn't know that was going to be the case and when he found out he got very angry and very ticked off and he was almost like refusing to go ahead with it and matchmaker k had to uh basically like talk back and forth between the vampires and Mordred and he had to like contain the situation and try and bargain essentially try and haggle the situation and uh, figure out what was going to happen and in the end they decided that okay he still like Mordred still has to go ahead with the name changing um, his last name you know making it Sahinza he still has to do that but the vampires agreed that they would do a wedding ceremony with like the demonic customs rather than the vampiric customs just to make it a little bit fair so then when we actually had the wedding in like the mini movie portions you know all of this happened behind the scenes but when we actually had the um mini movie wedding portion essentially he and kyra you know they greeted the guests under the wedding arch and i, and I thought it was kind of i liked it i thought it was kind of sweet because he was like telling her the way the the demonic customs are um he was like telling her that as they were doing it like you know educating her a little bit sharing like about his culture where he comes from um but essentially he you know they greet the guests and then the couple that's having their union the ones who are being joined into a union because he said that the demons don't believe in marriages and they don't have marriages but they do have unions and they do have um like customs to celebrate that right and so when a couple is being joined in a union um they essentially dance under the wedding arch with each other in front of the guests to show their happiness and it's supposed to symbolize harmony and compatibility and it's almost like a mating ritual that tells everyone that you know the female in the relationship is going to have the male's children and continue his line uh, and then he ended that by saying you know scared darling and she said not yet um, and then from that we skip to the scene here with everyone in Castle Chiba for the wedding reception and their wedding portrait was up on the wall. Everyone was taking a look at that. Um, and then he kind of came aside to her at the back and she looked at him and she was like, so about what you said at the, like under the wedding arch, you were joking, right? So that's kind of where we are picking up. I honestly loved how this episode went in the beginning. I love the interactions between them. I love the whole wedding. Uh, I had so much fun with it. And it's just so filled with personality right now, guys. I'm being honest. I'm warming up to Mordred. Like, he's melting me like a candle, guys. He's doing it. He's doing it. Um, but obviously, we know that Kyra, I mean, at least, you know, in her mind even, she is not ready for kids right now or anything like that mm -mm. um so it, it you know she thought about the marriage but she didn't think that far ahead and it's kind of freaking her out a little bit um she doesn't know mordred's expectations regarding this um there probably will be some things they have to sort out between each other you know as they get used to married life um and it, their relationship has been a little bit hot and cold i'm not gonna lie so you know, after the whole exchange they had in the previous episode, you know, with the first kiss with each other and stuff, um, she was warming up to the idea of Mordred and, you know, actually starting to think about him a lot more. Um, and then they had that whole situation where he was, you know, refusing to go ahead with the marriage and Kay had to, like, calm him down and, like, deal with the deal with the whole situation he was kind of i think Kay was freaking out a little bit he like he didn't expect he didn't talk about it beforehand or mention it to anyone like even mordred because he thought mordred was aware that everything was going to happen the vampiric way uh, and he assumed it wouldn't be a problem and mordred wouldn't care but you know when they started talking about the details he asked mordred did care and he did not like that 
So, yeah, Kay was freaking out a little bit, but I think he's kind of happy things are more or less under control. Um, but yeah, I, I, this is kind of, a more sort of equal, I suppose, relationship than the vampires typically have. And honestly, that's because Mordred is the way he is, and he, like, he, he, like, threw a fit about it. If it had been someone more compliant or complacent, then obviously they would have just gone along with the vampire's plans. He didn't. But anyways, I was saying the hot and cold because when Kyra kind of learned that, okay, now there's an issue on Mordred's end, um, they did have, you know, those sizzling interactions, but they hadn't really, like, she told him that she is ready to marry him and she wants to marry him. Um, but after that, they hadn't really spoken to each other. And so he was only speaking to them through Kay and not really directly to Kyra. So she got a bit confused by that, and their romance kind of went down quite a bit, right? Like, it was, like, hot and cold, almost. And um, once that situation was dealt with, he was much happier under the wedding arch, and everything went well with the actual wedding ceremony. So now they're slowly, like, warming up to each other again, and, you know, he's becoming flirtatious again because he's in a good mood now. But that's, that's kind of what happened. That's kind of what happened with everyone. Uh, Kyra, I feel like, looks lovely. Can we, like, get her to stand up and, and take a look at her? Mordred's looking quite fine as well, but can we, uh, where is she? Can we get Kyra to, like, come over here? Because I want to take a look at her, her wedding dress and, you know, like, her makeup and attire. She just, she looks so sweet. And it's different from what she normally wears because she normally looks like a sea witch, a dark sea witch that is potentially going to dabble in sorcery that's like the vibes she always gives us but for her wedding attire she went with you know a very kind of innocent look very sweet very soft uh, there's still some darkness in her makeup not gonna lie but i just love i love 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 her wedding attire look at this like the simplicity of it Hold on a second. I just pop all the walls down. But like the simplicity of it, it suits her so much. Ah, oh, she looks lovely. She looks so good. Like that color on her. Um, obviously, she went a little bit dark and dramatic with the makeup, especially the eyes, because you know, it's Kyra. Uh, but I still think she just looks so sweet. So, so sweet, to be honest. Look at her. Oh, she's lovely. She's lovely. I'm so happy with her. And also, let's take a look at the wedding portrait. My oh my. Let's take a look at the wedding portrait between her and Mordred. So this is it, guys. This is the wedding portrait. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, if they had gotten married, like, straight off the bat, I don't know if I would have felt the same about this couple, and if I would have felt the same about Mordred. But because the wedding has happened, like, after everything between them, like, the little things between them, um, where I'm at now, I, I, I do like this couple. I do like it. They have, uh, I've warmed up to it. I have, I have hopes for it. So, okay. Um, I am going to let these guys kind of interact with each other. Um, I think the youngsters should have, yeah, this, like, showing up slowly. They should have been invited. And while that's happening, um, while that's happening, while Kyra's, you know, interacting with everyone, I do want to really quickly go over the Instagram posts that took place after the previous episode and you know as always I will link them in the description below um, and I also give you the patreon link for those of you who don't have social media or like to be on social media so okay the first post was checking in with princess Kyra of course and in that post she was talking about how you know she's been resistant to the idea of Mordred but after her conversation with him at the engagement, her perception of him changed 
he, he wasn't exactly what she was expecting. And at some point, maybe her feelings had also changed because when he kissed her, it was like a complete surprise. Um, you know, at Delphi's birthday. It was a complete surprise, and she could have pushed him away, but she didn't push him away. And now that's caused her to, like, face certain feelings that she didn't know she had or she was willing to explore. Um, and, like, you know, she was still uncertain about a lot of things, but there was one thing she knew for sure, and that's the fact that she... She had stopped resisting the marriage. She'd stopped resisting this inevitable marriage to Mordred. And in my mind, that post is also when she tells him that, you know, she, she's ready to marry him. And then the second post was checking in with Princess Juno. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Princess Juno. Who... Honey, she, you know, was saying how Diana is very naive to think that she can even pursue um, or, like, get romantically involved with Lord Jacob because that's just, like, Lady Elaine's complicated, her son is complicated, that's just, that's a no-go zone. She she shouldn't even be there. Um, and then, you know, even though she was reprimanding Diana, she was saying that, this whole situation has kind of made me think about the olden days when, you know, I also had companionship and, you know, a part of me misses that. And um, she was thinking, like, maybe I should, um, you know, indulge in a little bit of flirtation. Like, surely there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And then she was saying how Xander was kind of looking very appealing to her. So, you know, she was flirting a little bit with Xander in that post. Um, and guys, I feel like Juno is like, she's on a Coven Rose platter at this point. <laughs> she's like going through all the Coven Rose siblings because she was flirting with Xander. She had a whim for that. And then as soon as that finished, she got a whim to flirt with Lord Chan. So she's like going through, she's sampling the Coven Rose siblings, uh, which is very funny. And then the third um, Instagram post was checking in with Queen Eden. Now, Eden and Catalea were doing a little bit of woohoo, but in that post, Eden was talking about how Catalea has been putting a lot of effort into this marriage alliance and making sure everything goes smoothly, and she really, like, appreciates that, and it's making her love Catalea more, and, you know, she's, like, craving Catalea and her attention, and then she was talking about how you know, whether Catalea is like an addiction of hers, potentially, because a part of her, I feel like, knows that her relationship with Catalea is very skewed, and it's not entirely right, and it didn't, it didn't happen, it didn't start and grow in the right circumstances. I think she's aware of that. But she was saying that, you know, I'm sure across the years there have been people who look at us with disdain and disapproval, but I don't really care. All I know is that when I'm with her, I feel like a flippin' goddess, um, to be revered. Oh my goodness, is that a spider? What? Since when did we have spiders? And I thought we just had cobwebs. And the spiders were in our minds. Wow, okay, well. Anyways. Um, yeah, so she kind of said that she, she doesn't care because she feels a certain way and her feelings are all that matters. And to be honest, if this is what being uh, addicted like feels like, she feels like addiction is a beautiful sickness to have so yes she she's it's concerning her mindset is very concerning um at present but i also think a part of her is aware that her relationship with catalea isn't a healthy relationship she she i mean come on she knows she knows it's not healthy but at this point she kind of just doesn't care um it's like her fix and it keeps her happy and that's all she cares about so those are the the posts um and what we explored there but okay peoples are becoming friends and all those lovely things which is great um why don't we check in okay kyra okay let's check in on mordred since you know it's his oh my goodness <laughs> hello guys hello kevin rose brothers hello Actually, all the Coven Rose brothers lined up. Hello. 
Uh, yeah, let's check in with... What the heck? What do you mean it's power conservation day? Ugh. Anyways, let's check in with Modred because it's his wedding day. So let's see, you know, what, what he wants to do. Oh, he wants to become friends with Lady Guinevere. And ask Princess Kyra about her day. Modred, I feel like, is making a bit of an effort. Like, he knows that Guinevere is really close to Kyra. And Guinevere is like a mother figure to Kyra more than Eden, I think, is noticed at this point. Um, so it's kind of nice. He's making an effort. He hasn't even wanted to befriend the queen. Like, he hasn't even wanted to befriend the queen. I think he knows. He is aware that... Um, whatchamacallit. He is aware that Guinevere is the mother figure. And because, you know, he's trying with Kyra, he's also trying with, with Guinevere, which is quite nice. But why don't we... What? Bloom, you have to go to Academy now? Okay, fine. Fine. You guys go. Yeah, you guys go. Where, where'd you go? Where are you? Okay, she's gone. That's fine. But Mordred wanted to check in on Kyra to see how she's doing. Honey, why are you down here? No. Don't be... No. Get into your beautiful wedding dress. Why are you here? Let's go and check in with her. So let's, where would that be? Small talk, check in. So yeah, we this this day was kind of scheduled to be the autumn caravan, but you know, I, I discussed this in the previous episode and the queen kind of decided that there were certain things she wasn't entirely happy with. What are you guys doing? What is this role? Are you role playing? <laughs> what is this? What is this guys? Uh, why are you in the dungeon? You shouldn't be in the dungeon, guys. Okay, continuing the demonic mating ritual. Anyways, um, look at this. It's like autonomously like being more romantic with her and she's like flirting with him. It's the beginnings of something. She's not being entirely resistant to him. Okay, um, yeah, like I was saying, certain things the queen feels as though she just doesn't want to do anymore. So she has like stopped or gotten rid of the autumn caravan the throne jubilation um obviously the royal tournament is a huge part of their culture so that's like not going away and neither is like the things that the queen has introduced so you know she introduced the council reappointment and she introduced the day of the goddess or reintroduced that so those things she is keeping but some of the other like ancient vampiric holidays that we've been having the queen has gotten rid of them um, she feels as though they're obsolete. There's no point to them anymore. Um, and I don't know how everyone would feel about that. But, you know, we have seen changes like this throughout the ages. Like Vamfest. You know, some holidays have changed. Some have been reintroduced. Some of them got rid of. The Blood Bull she got rid of. She doesn't. She feels like that's a bit obsolete at this point. She's got, you know, other things to focus on. Okay, Mordred, I think you've already asked about a day, and oh, they're, they're both in the cell together now. They're both chatting in the cell together, which, you know, is very sweet and all, but you also want to go and um, befriend the champion, so let's, okay, Kyra's out, now you're just talking to yourself, mate. <laughs> let's go up, let's go up and um, chat with Guinevere. Let's see how Guinevere is doing. Come on, come on. Let's go up. We'll go uh, speak to Guinevere. We'll befriend her. Um, okay. While he goes and chats with her, I will leave him be. Um, let's check in on some of the others and maybe work on some other stuff that I can work on easier. You know what I've started doing? The friendships I try and do off camera because it takes a lot more effort to get done but I try and squeeze in like these interactions, like the small ones that we can see. So she has been wanting to like flirt with Matchmaker K, Princess Eve, and I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but you know what? I feel like it's her just trying to like chummy up to someone who she feels has influence and she feels has power. Like maybe sticking with or trying to get the, you know, purists on her side is a little bit difficult and it's much easier to get outsiders to jump onto you know her like pro eve bandwagon um you know she's a half visiting outsider the deep the demon faction 
uh, they're outsiders, so maybe they can bond over that. I feel like that's her thing behind that. And then she wants to be friendly with Prince Mordred. I mean, he is her brother-in-law now. So let's go up and get her to, you know, flirt and match make okay, why not? I'll go ahead and uh, do that. And you know, this is exactly the type of behavior that I feel like Prince Daryl is worried about. And it's why he was kind of bugging her to start thinking about maybe going public with their relationship, even though all hell would break loose if they did. But this is why, like, he's paranoid about these kind of things. I feel like Daryl is aware of Eve's personality. And as much as he fears her getting roped along with someone else like Kyra, I think a bigger fear is that Eve will grow bored of him and Eve will, um, you know, go pursue someone else because they serve her purpose better and it's just easier to maintain. Like, their relationship is a secret, and if she gets bored of it, it'll be very easy to just abandon. So, I mean, yeah, at least, I mean, at least she's doing this behind closed doors, right? Daryl's not gonna see this. No one's gonna see this. Kay's like the only one. Kay's the only one. And oh my goodness. <laughs> Ask him on a date. Yeah, honey. Uh, no. No. You shan't go on a date with him. But these guys are going to talk. Nixon's going to join the conversation. Why not, Nixon? Um, okay, I did see, like, Mordred chatting with Guinevere. She's gone off to do her own thing, I suppose. Okay, Juno. What's happening, Lexi? I don't know who this is. And I don't think it matters. But okay, Juno, you know, she, she wanted to... Um, Blood with Chance, the the Coven Rose brothers. So why don't we go down and do exactly that? George isn't even here, so I don't think he would he would be too offended. Actually, no, George is down there. Who am I talking about? Xander's not down there, so that should be fine. But also, she doesn't have a romantic relationship with Xander. They did flirt, but it was like a casual flirt. Nothing's happened. She's just going around, kind of reliving the um, her past memories. Of relationships and the funny thing is she's going for all the spellcasters she's going for the siblings but also the spellcasters you know Juno's never been in a relationship with a vampire has she she was in love with her cousin Sage who was a full vampire but she's never actually been in a relationship with one her first um, like partner the person she was courting was Azura and then since she's come out of that she hasn't been in a relationship either but now, like, she's wanting to, she's wanting to get flirtatious. And it's with all these, like, Coven Rose siblings. And then also, you know, um, I mean, who knows if Elaine ever succeeds at this, but Elaine has plans to match her son up with Juno. But obviously Juno doesn't know about these things. She doesn't know about those plans. No, she does not. Okay. You guys are doing your own thing. Elaine doesn't have anything interesting going on. Mm. Okay, the queen. Wanted to check in with Catalea. Of course you do. You're like addicted to her. And oh my goodness, Catalea, what is she doing? Is she telling a story or is she getting angry? I don't know. I can't tell. I didn't see. I didn't see, guys. Um, check in on Catalea. How is she feeling? Catalea, honey, are you doing good? She seems a bit upset. She seems a little bit upset. I don't know why that is the case. But okay, these guys are chatting with each other. I mean, Guinevere is more mother to the the princess than anyone. But you know, this is her royal mother on the left. And then by marriage, Catalea is her second mother. So I suppose she does have to at least pay some respects to them. Okay, Catalea wants to get to know Princess Eve. Yeah, guys, remember that, uh, what, whose birthday was it? It was Eve's birthday, wasn't it? Yeah, remember during Eve's, oh, Diana's inviting Estelle, okay. Uh, remember Eve's birthday when she was, like, talking to Eve by the fireplace and she was trying to get close to her, but then Eve was like, what the heck is she doing? That was something that happened in one of the Insta posts, but, 
Yeah, guys, she's obviously trying to like get closer to Eve. So let's get to know. Let's get to know Eve a little bit more. No, Catalea, backtrack. Backtrack, honey. Backtrack. You know what's funny? I feel like everyone, <laughs> to be honest, I, I feel like everyone has like sunk their claws into their own princesses to control. Uh, have you guys noticed this pattern? With Guinevere, I mean, her and Kyra ended up having, ended up having a wholesome relationship, but initially, Guinevere, like, chose Kyra, and she, like, sunk her clothes into Kyra, and she was, you know, trying to control Kyra. That's kind of how things started. Um, and then Elaine sunk her clothes into Juno, and she tried but failed to control Juno. And I feel like now, Catalea has, like, sunk her clothes, or is trying to sink her claws into Eve and influence Eve. Um, nobody's done that to Diana, Bloom, and Ice, but that just might be because they're too young right now. Uh, for a long time, like, Kyra wasn't doing anything like that. But then again, she had, like, you know, she had other priorities. She was sent into the coven for a reason by the demon faction, and so her mission was almost to, you know, do this marriage. And now that she's completed the marriage, or at that time she had made, like, the match, um, she was starting to think about maybe her own plans, and her own plans might, you know, include having a princess that she can influence, um, and I suppose she's decided that Eve is that princess. So, um, yeah, fascinating. Oh, did you not get to know? Did you not get to know? Come on. Come on, Catalea. Is she paranoid? Ah, she's paranoid. And Eve is paranoid. Oh my goodness, guys. If they actually start getting along, they're going to get along so well. Now she wants to, like, chat with Princess Eve. Blee. If they start getting along, guys, they are going to get along exquisitely well. Because they're both paranoid. And they can both be paranoid about other people together. Ay, ay, ay. She's found. She's found a daughter in Eve, it seems. Yeah, uh, Catalea, she's been kind of hard to pin down in terms of, like, whether she's pro visited or not, and, like, where exactly, like, where exactly she falls uh, in politics, because she's always, you know, been with the queen. The queen's been more or less pro- these guys, like pro visitants, because of her four daughters, um, in a convoluted way, of course, um, that I've spoken about before. And then I feel like initially we saw a lot of interactions between her and like um, Diana, you know, trying. It, it almost seemed like the way she was talking that you should be grateful that you're not a visitant or you don't look like a visitant, and you know, we love you because you're, you don't look like a visitant, uh, you look like. Kyra and Juno, like all of those kind of interactions and constantly reassuring the children in strange ways, um, has always kind of made me feel as though maybe she leans towards being a purist, but I feel like she's always been on the fence. A lot with Princess Eve, I would not put it past Catalea if she had this strange relationship with her stepdaughter. I would not put it past her. Um, but let's just assume this is, bro, like, if, if Catalea ended up doing this, like, if this is how she wanted to, okay, hold on, if this is how she wanted to actually control Eve, like, being in a relationship with her stepdaughter in the down low, oh my goodness, she's, like, Elaine on a next level. Because Elaine has never, I think, considered that. I don't think Elaine's ever gone that route. But I wouldn't put it past Catalea. She's a different breed altogether, guys. The stuff that she's done... I Like, I don't think she even has shame. I don't think so. And also, it's just... I'm just getting this, guys. It's just like... The thought floated past my head. The fact that... 
Catalea, like, she's done questionable things in the past, but also Eve, we know that Eve is into incestuous relationships, so like, ah, Eve might not even have a problem with it. Oh my goodness, things escalated so much more than I was planning. Okay, so, uh, oh, now, look, now she wants to go uh, make out with Flip and Eden. Okay, so Eden is still at the back of her mind. Good to know. Good to flip and know. Where is Eden? Look, she's gonna go straight to Eden now. Yeah, where is Eden? Eden, where you at? You here? Do we have a... We need to... You guys have to go up, actually. I think. I think you guys have to go up. Yes, because we don't have a place for you guys to sit down. So I'm gonna get you to sit here, and I'm gonna get you to sit here because... Catalea really, really wants to um, physically get in touch with you. So let's go do that. Let's go do that. And, you know, we also are aware of the fact that Eve doesn't have a problem with secret relationships. So if things got messy, guys, things could get messy. I didn't even think about that. Like, even an episode ago, that whole situation didn't even cross my mind. Ah, oh, The Sims. The Sims are saucy sometimes. Well, all the time. All the time. Like, every time I think this generation is dramatic enough, it just gets even more dramatic. Like, more so than I anticipate. I, I, I like, I think we've reached the limits, and then we haven't. <laughs> and then the game's like, ah, no, there is more to come. Okay, oh, anything else? Fight with Elaine? You're still, like, wanting to fight with Elaine? You're still, like, having beef with her? Honey, are you, like... Are you, um... Do you have, like, a personality disorder? <laughs> well, she wants to go fight with Elaine. So... Oh, do we have to, like... I think, I think we have to warm up to the fight. Yeah, I think we have to, like, get them in the zone for a fight. They're not gonna dive into it straight off the bat. Well, come on, let's go. Let's go. I mean, no wedding in the Salazar kingdom at this point can happen without a proper fight between Catalea and Elaine. I honestly feel like they're the only ones who fight. But I'm pretty sure they fought during Catherine's wedding. I feel like they fought during Catalea's wedding. It's like, almost like a ritual at this point. <laughs> They're fighting again in Kyra's wedding. Like at the, the wedding receptions. Yep, let's go have this vampiric duel. It can end with a bang. Like literally. <laughs> okay, are we going out? Yep, these guys are going out to have their fight. And we can wrap up the episode, guys. Okay. Here they go. Here they go. Who's gonna win? I feel like all the fights, Elaine has won. Um, but, and I feel like, Cat I, I don't know, I feel like Catalea is the one that initiates a lot of these fights because she gets annoyed. Like, Elaine could not care less. Catalea is the one that gets annoyed and wants to yell at her. And Catalea is the one who wants to, um like physically fight with her and then she always loses she seems like she's doing a lot better this time though she might actually win she might actually win guys look at that elaine's getting thrashed no oh oh my goodness elaine how did you get how did you get beat up and then still win she won that fight like every time Catalea, you'd think that this, like at this point you knew your limits and you just stopped jumping into this this fire pit, but no, she, she doesn't. She keeps doing it. She keeps doing it. You know what? I feel like in that fight, Elaine almost like let her think she had the upper hand and then she whooped her backside and like showed her who's boss. Huh. Okay, guys. With that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. Another congratulations to the beautiful Kyra and her new husband, um, Prince Mordred. 
I, mean, I assume at this point he's kind of like his title is prince consort but like if Kyra became queen then his title he'd always keep the prince because he's prince of another kingdom but he would be he's like prince consort right now and if Kyra becomes queen then he would become like royal husband and if she doesn't then he'll stay as prince consort even if Kyra becomes a lady but okay guys with that said and done i'm gonna leave off thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you all next time bye bye Thank you.